Hello there and uh, welcome to Power Talk. I'm your host, Victor Mwila. Today, we continue looking at alternative solutions, energy solutions for Zambian households. And our topic is cooking with gas, a practical guide to safe and efficient usage in homes. In our last episode, we discussed the benefits, safety, and cost effectiveness of using gas. Today, we are taking a step further. We are hosting the Zambia Liquefied Petroleum Gas Association, ZLPGA, here to demonstrate how you can safely and efficiently use gas appliances for cooking. We will also hear from a member of the community who has made the switch from electricity and charcoal to gas for cooking and will share their first-hand experience. For now, I introduce to you my guest in the studio, the ZLPGA president, Obed Chiruba. Mr. Chiruba, you've been on this platform before. I'm glad to welcome you and thank you for accepting the invitation to come and appear on Power Talk once more. Thank you very much and thanks very much for having me here. Now, this is a very important topic. And uh, before we get into the demonstration today, I would like you to just help us uh, go through the, safe, uh, the safety tips, uh, things that uh, households should pay attention to if they are going to engage in using gas for cooking. What are some of these important tips that you would like to send across? Thank you very much. Maybe just before even talk about the safety tips, as Zambia LPG Association, we are an industrial organization that is focuses on promoting the alternative source of energy, in particular LPG, in a safe manner. Now we can talk about the safety tips. The safety tips that we're going to talk about today, basically, we're going to incorporate for both who have been using LPG as a source of cooking and those who would like to start using gas today. Therefore, the starting point, if you would like to start using gas, you have to know the smell, how the gas smells. That is very, very important. Because what is important about gas is to contain it. And when it leaks, you have to know how it smells it and differentiate from any other smells in the house. So the starting point is to know the smell of the gas. So that when it smells, you will be able to pick it up quickly to say there is a leakage in the house. So when you start off today to go and buy a gas cylinder from any outlet, you have to know that you know the smell of the gas. And when you buy it, you want to carry it, the starting point also is to know how to transport that cylinder. The gas cylinder, whether it is full or empty, must be transported in an upright manner, vertically. And Ish. those are some of the things that uh, we have, we, most of the people, including myself, have not paid attention to. It is very, very important for you to pay attention to that because gas, when it is produced, it's, a, it's in gas form. But for easy transportation and storage, it is actually compressed. So when it is compressed, it changes from gas to liquid. So you can imagine you have compressed the gas. So meaning a leakage in liquid form is too much compared to gas itself. So meaning you have to take care, extra attention to make sure that you don't carry it in horizontal state, but it's supposed to be upright or vertically. That is a safety way. So if you, for example, you're driving a small car, a saloon vehicle, because that's where the argument comes in. You want me to go and hire a van or a truck specifically to come and carry a small cylinder, for example, a 9 kg. You can still use your car. Don't put it in the boot, but what you do is get that cylinder, put it at the back seat, and make sure that you move the passenger seat in front to make sure that it is fixed, it's not moving. That's and enough space to absolutely. be able to sit. Yes, yeah. and then lock it. Thereafter, open the windows. You can drive and get to your place. That is one important thing. Now, when you get home, you have brought now that gas for cooking in the house. You have now to connect that cylinder. You have to, to make sure that there is proper ventilation in the house. Ventilation is very, very critical. And even when you get there, when you start using it, it's up to be in upright position. It should not be used, it should not be put uh, horizontally, whether it is empty or full. That is the starting point. Once you connect it there, now at the point of switching on the gas stove, we have basically two types of gas stoves. There are those that have self-igniters. 
and there are those that are old model that does not have self-igniters, that you either use a matches or you use a lighter. These lighters can be found in most of these chain stores that you can use to start it. So the starting point is to make sure that when you're opening the, the, when you open the gas and you go to the stove, you're supposed to either light the matches first or the lighter. When the gas is coming out, you should find the what? The light, the, the flame, not the other way around. Why, why, why is it like that? Let's take an example. It's rain season and the matchbox is a little bit wet. And you open the gas on the cylinder there. And you start struggling to light the matches. What is going to happen to the gas? It is going to start coming out, you to start accumulating. At the point you are going to be successful to light the flame, what is going to happen? You're creating a bomb in the house. <clears throat> and you start thinking, I told you this is dangerous. So the starting point always is to make sure that you light the matches. When you're opening the flame, the gas, the gas should find the what? The flame. The flame. And that's how it works, not the other way around. Okay. And there, sometimes people, um, I've heard people say gas is very dangerous and uh, people are scared getting into using gas as an alternative uh, to electricity or charcoal because they feel it's more dangerous compared to these traditional sources of actually, energy. Actually, gas is very, very safe. First of all, when gas is produced, it's odorless. It doesn't smell. That's why in the first place I talked about knowing how gas smells. It's very, very important. So when it is produced, it's odorless. So there is this chemical that is added to it to give it that scent. And it smells bad like rotten eggs. I don't know if you have <laughs> ever smelled uh, rotten eggs. It doesn't smell nice. So just even a slight lick of it, you'll be able to smell it. So when you put it in the house, like I explained, you light it and you start cooking. Avoid putting the gas of why it is windy because the flame might be blown off. Once the flame is blown off and the gas stove is off, it means the gas will continue coming out and it will start accumulating in the house. So don't open windows while the door is open. And the other thing is that when you're cooking things that are able... How, how do you balance that with uh, uh, the point that there's need for ventilation? Just open the windows. You can even close the... the just one window is enough. Even if you don't even open the window, air always secretes in the house. What is even make it more dangerous for you to start cooking from outside? Because the wind will be blowing. But the air that is in the house is good enough. You only open the windows and the doors if you, you, think, you feel that there is a leakage in the house or the cylinder has leaked. That is very, very important. You have to open so that you can allow air to secret. Now, when you are cooking and you are cooking, there are certain foods that normally overflow when you are cooking. Even the shima sometimes if you didn't make the porridge or whatever you call it properly, when, when it is cooking, sometimes it overflows, it overboils. When it overboils, it can now go and clog the burners, and that might switch off or turn off the stove. But the gas will continue coming out. Imagine maybe it's an upstairs house, and you're upstairs, the, you have switched, the, the, the flame is switched off, and the gas will continue coming out just like that. That is not right. So you have to make sure that when you're using gas, once in a while you are checking and see what you have put on the stove. Any more uh, before we get into a demonstration? Uh, any other things that the other uh, things those that, that like... are planning to switch uh, to gas for cooking should uh, be aware of? Yeah. You know, when you're cooking, this is a very important thing. When you finish cooking, don't go straight to the knobs of the stove to turn them off. The starting point should be the cylinder itself. Close the valve completely. And when the flame dies on the stove, then you can turn off the knobs on the stove. Why? The reason is simple. If you start with the knobs on the stove, it means you have trapped the gas between the cylinder and the stove. Now, sometimes you may have rats, and rats are capable of eating anything. What will happen? They will eat the pipe. And you think you have turned off the, the gas there, and the gas will start leaking from, from the pipe. That is very, very important. Mm -hmm. If you know that you are not going to cook for today, and maybe for some considerable period of time, or, or maybe two hours or so, make sure that the starting point is always the, 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 the cylinder. Whether you are it. switching on or switching off? Uh, uh. When you are switching on, you start, of course, with the, with the cylinder. 
you open it, and then you go to the stove. We'll do that physically and do the demonstration. For those stoves, we have the four burner stoves. These burn, four burner stoves, most of them, if they have a self-igniter, it's normally connected to electricity. Now, the whole idea of having these gas stoves is because of the load shedding that we are experiencing. That should not worry you. It will come with a cable that you have to plug on the socket for you to start that. You can use either a matches or you can use a lighter, which we are going to demonstrate. But for the small stoves, most of them, they have these uh, uh, self-igniters. And we call them, actually, for those who are thinking, me, I cannot buy a gas stove because children have children, they may do A, B, C, D. Be rest assured that it is very safe to use gas because now these gas stoves that are coming now, there is what they, they have what we call a child lock. Just like though you have it on your car. A child cannot, cannot do that, cannot uh, start it. Okay. So even opening that, even, if, even an adult, if I tell them to start the gas stove, if they don't explain to them how to go about it, they will fail. So they are absolutely very, very safe. They shouldn't even worry about using the gas Mr. Stove. Chiluwa, thank you so much for those tips. And uh, we'll be getting into a demonstration immediately after this break. We'll be looking at how you can use gas appliances safely. Uh, immediately after this break, we get into uh, a demonstration uh, from uh, Mr. Chiluwa from the Zambia Liquefied Petroleum Gas. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right, now I'll do the demonstration how to start a gas stove and how to turn it off. So for starters, I want first of all to explain the gadgets that we normally use to connect the gas stove. What you are seeing here, this is what we call the bull nose regulator. This bull nose regulator is normally used on cylinders uh, above a 6 kg. Normally it's a six, 9 kg is going upwards, that's why we use it. This is what we call a bull nose regulator. It regulates the flow of gas and it is preset. You don't need even to adjust it. It is preset. You don't need to adjust it anywhere. Once you connect it, the adjustments have already been done. And this is what we call now the hose. This hose is the one which now connects from a stove to a cylinder. That is if you want to use a two-plate stove or a one-plate stove. We have also some uh, one-plate stoves that are made like this. But why you are seeing this um, uh, cylinder, which is a 6 kg, it can also work as an independent stove. As long as you put a cooker top, a plate on top, it can be used like that. Now, the way it works, you get a regulator. This regulator is specifically meant for smaller cylinders. We call it a swivel regulator. The capacity or the pressure that it is able to release is the same as that one, except that this one is meant for smaller cylinders. And this is how we tie it. You just tie it on top there. The normal way we tie the threads, this one is clockwise. It has those grooves that I'm using to, to, to tighten it. Don't use a spanner or something to make it too tight. You end up damaging the threads. Just hand tight is good enough. So like that, now the stove is set. We have, already, we have connected the, the two-plate stove. Now, how do we start it? You just now open. There is a, a valve here that you use to open. It's there. 
just open it like that just the normal way you open it so straight away now i'm very sure that the gas is now flowing to my two plate stove this particular stove has a self igniter it has a self igniter and it has a child lock we talked about the child lock that protects this particular uh, stove or to be abused if you're scared that children might temper temper with it so if I, even if i tell an adult to go and start it you can fail to start it because you end up just damaging the knobs how you do it is to push now this knob or the switch you push it inside and then turn it on your left like that so you can see now that the stove is on if you look pay a lot of attention to this you see that the flame is yellow it's a little bit weak and when the flame is like that it actually makes the pots dirty and the gas is not supposed to be like that so what you do underneath this stove there is this thing here this which allows oxygen to flow in so if you find yourself that you're having a stove which is making the pots dead like that, what you do is just to turn the stove like that and move this a little bit like that. So you can see that the flame has changed. Eh? It's very clean now. That is the blue flame that we want because now there is a proper mixture of oxygen and gas because oxygen supports burning. And this is clean gas that we are talking about. If I take it back to the way it was, just look at that. I'll close those holes like that. Look at how the flame has changed. So don't say, no, the quality of the gas is not good, blah, blah, blah. No. Just make adjustments here. And that's how it is. It's very clean. Now you can do the cooking. Same applies to this other knob. The same thing. You don't need even to worry. So you can cook. The temperature for the gas stove moved the moves from 0 degrees to 1970 degrees in less than 0.01 seconds so you can quickly cook, cook your food and off you go so we have also now another type the bull nose regulator that i talked about this bull nose regulator is basically used on that cylinder now the way this cylinder is connected this regulator is connected it's anti-clockwise when you're pushing it in the we are pushing we are, we are, we are pushing it in the in the cylinder first of all you pushing the pipe just like the way it is connected there you just pushing it there once you push it there the same way this pipe is connected there that's the way you connect it but my area of interest is just to explain how to connect it with a 9 kg a bull nose regulator the bull nose regulator is a little bit different from this swivel regulator okay what you do is the threads here are anti-clockwise. That's how you, you tighten them. And this is how it works. You tighten them like that. It goes in like that, in an opposite direction, which is anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise, like that. Then it is tight. Like that, now you can connect to a stove. That's how it works. So what belongs to you as a customer is basically the regulator and the stove. These cylinders belongs to an LPG marketing company. So when the gas finishes, what you do is just to take out this. Take out the regulator. And then you can take this cylinder to have it refilled. And that's how it works. Now, you have to be very careful. This regulator has this rubber here, this black rubber. This is a seal. This seal, once you remove it, and you forget to put it back once it comes out and you push in the regulator in the cylinder that is a source of leakages meaning the gas is going to be leaking now when you are cooking the gas is not supposed to smell if it is smelling the house is smelling gas it means there is a leakage somewhere now how do you do the leak test just make some soapy water and go straight to the joints for example you can come here and you can also go behind there why are we coming here this is the likely where it is likely to leak because this is where we have connected this so just get some soapy water and put it there when you see some bubbles you'll be able to tell that actually that is where it is leaking so it's important we check that and uh, make sure that there is no leakage now that we switched on this gas stove we have finished cooking i'm sure at the time i started explaining we have finished cooking what is the starting point 
Don't go to the stove and turn it off like that. No. Like I explained, the starting point should be here. Close the valve here on the cylinder. Okay. You've seen the flame was died there. It means there is no gas left in the pipe. Now, you can safely turn off the stove. That's how we do it. So, the same way it happens to the, the 6 kg, that's how you also do it with the 9 kg. So, that's all we had for you for today's uh, uh, LPG safety tips. Uh, I think we'll end here for today. Thank you very much, Mr. Obed Chiluba, uh, president of the ZLPGA, uh, for that great demonstration. We will now uh, hear from someone who has first-hand experience using gas in their home. They have switched from electricity and charcoal to using gas. Let's watch this. Harriet Tembo. When I wake up early in the morning, I just come out, find Zesco. We don't have Zesco. I'll just easily come and switch on and start frying my samosas. From the next thing, other than being a businesswoman, I'm a mother, so I'll, I won't even start looking for where's the charcoal, where's this, where's that. I just put porridge on my two plate cooker. I still sometimes would prefer using gas because it's so quick, it's convenient, and every good word about it is everything I can say about using a gas stove, using gas to cook, using gas to bake. I'm on the journey where I would like to get myself a four plate cooker, which is gas, so that even with load shedding, I can also bake, as it's something that I also love to do. From the time it came, I made sure to educate uh, the people that also work here. I made sure to tell them about, in case if there's a fire, what do you do? Uh, what do we look for uh, in, in terms of the scent of gas? Because it's not always that you'd have this scent of gas. If there's a scent of gas, it means there's gas leaking or maybe the stove has been turned on. But yet there's not any ignition of fire. So looking at that, I have kids, I've made sure to put my gas cylinder where it's a little bit hidden. Yes, and I've put uh, my containers there. It's always usually to the far end. And um, I've told them about the safety measures. Gas doesn't, that just doesn't blow out, no. Looking at, we have children, at times maybe they'll come and switch on the stove, we make sure that as we are done with the cooking, we always close the cylinder.
Thank you, Ms. Tembo, for sharing your experience with our viewers today. Uh, let me turn to you, uh, Mr. Chiruba, before we wrap up this program. What are your final remarks as we are concluding? Today we were doing a practical demonstration of how you can use gas appliances. What are your final remarks before we close the program? Well, thank you very much. My final remarks as usual is to just encourage people to switch from electricity, from charcoal to gas and make gas as the main source of energy as far as cooking is concerned. We should not make gas as an alternative, as it were. We should make it as the main and make electricity as an alternative. Be rest assured that gas is very safe and it's very affordable. It's very affordable to use. You have control over it. So you shouldn't even worry about gas that it's not uh, safe. If you have any concerns, any issues to do with the safety of gas, as the Zambia LPG Association, we stand ready to make sure that we educate you. You have to be aware the do's and don'ts of how to use LP, um, this gas. And as an association, we are making every effort to make sure that we reach everyone and teach them about the safe use of LPG. And I understand it's not always that you, if, if you have uh, a, a 6 kg cylinder, for, for example, it's not always that you just have to feed it up all the time. There, I understand there are um, some that are dealing in gas and you can buy as much as you are able to afford. Actually, that's, what, that's the direction we're taking. It's partial feeding. It's acceptable partial feeding. For example, if you have a 6 kg and you have remaining with 3 kg and you feel maybe the gas is about to finish, you're very free to go and top up with 1 kg or 2 kgs. Just like the way you measure the plastic bag of charcoal. Even gas, that's the route we are taking. That's why we sell the gas per kg. So feel free to walk to any kiosks. They'll be able to top up. Mr. Chiruba, I would like to thank you so much uh, for uh, coming to the program and um, doing this demonstration that uh, you have shown us today. Thank you very much for having me. We are just a phone call. We are ready to come and explain more. Well, viewers, that's it on Power Talk today. Uh, as we have seen and heard, gas can be safe efficient and an economical alternative to traditional cooking methods when used correctly. Thank you for joining us on Power Talk once again. My name is Victor Miller. We'll see you next time as we continue exploring energy solutions for a brighter, more sustainable future. On behalf of the entire production team, it's bye for now. Mm -hmm.